Welcome back to This Is Hardcore Podcast. Quick little thing. Figured throw something out there. Christmas. And who better than Fool's Game and the track Fading Away. This is off their latest release, which is Trials of Life. I have a good time breaking balls with Clemo, Stucky, Big Jake, but hands off to the fact that they are clearly representing all of all of Eastern Pennsylvania, Delaware. I mean, they're the band from the area right now that's really flying to the top. And um, what a great representative also for Philadelphia, Delaware, all of it, you know, January 1st in Syracuse, which is uh, I'm glad to see Syracuse is picking it back up and returning to the New Year's Day show. The show is... Sunday, January 1st, in Silver Street Event Center. It's 2 p.m., all ages. And for 20 bucks, you can't beat it these days. The promised death threat, another victim. Restraining order, warn, simulacra, deal with God, street hassle, never again, cut down, fool's game, and all for all. But this is a young band that's been booking their own shows, traveling all over, doing it the right way. As I always say, that's the path. There's a lot of young bands who want to cut corners, add some middlemen, run the internet, cry about merch cuts, and that's not what this is about, and that's not what Fool's Game is about. Hard work and pure hardcore, and I'm proud of these guys. You're listening to what will be the last thing I record on my old laptop, and I say that because at our annual get-together Christmas Eve dinner, I was gifted by Bob Wilson, Alex... Elise, Mike, Jess, everybody there uh, surprised me with a um, a new laptop. And they did it in a very sly way of figuring out the laptop that I was hoping to get. As I've been saying, i got to get a new one to do these shows just so that way these things run on time. And um, it was a very emotional moment for me to be gifted something like that by people who I love and appreciate Kev Hare was there. Every, I mean, everyone was there. And it's just, it's surreal. And I'm still processing. I have to download some apps and get that one ready. So I figured before I um, give up on this one, I would put something out for Christmas morning because the last two weeks have been hard to nail down time. The few times I've had some time, this laptop just decided it needed to just be updating and dicking around and making it impossible to do the Christmas show like I did last year. So the few interviews that I have for the Christmas show will pop up on our New Year's Eve feed appropriately. I'm still called the holiday show. Sorry for that, but no reason to not reach out and talk to people and just express not only thank yous for the year, but to remind people that, you know, the internet is the devil on days like this because if life isn't giving you bountiful amounts of gifts and you know a lot of prosperity you can go on Instagram and feel worse for yourself and I can't tell you how many times I've gone on the internet around holidays and just had some of the most like myopic fuck everybody kind of mental space that's what drew me into to be honest like it's like fuck everybody you know like yeah, there's the funny joke about the punk rock kid who lives in the cul-de-sac and has the big house and the normal white kid family with the grandmom and the huge buffet. But I'm not going there. What I'm saying is is just because you see it on the internet and a picture under a tree doesn't mean that that's what this whole thing is about. You know, sometimes I've had a I've had Thanksgivings and Christmases that were fucking there was nothing there. But Nothing isn't nothing. I still could get up and go to work. I still had somewhere over my head, even if it was temporary, even if it was sleeping on a couch. There's still people in your life that matter. There's always more to it. So if you didn't have the best year or you had a really fucking hard year, take this time to sit back and and not beat yourself up, but think about like how you're going to do the things to change your, your position in life. I mean, even Adam Heartless, who 
you know, a kid went from being at every show in every pit to being in a wheelchair, still figures out a way to make it through every day with the darkness that he holds up to. And I look at him and go, well, fuck, man, he's still buying records and listening to new music and still trying to do his best. I got nothing to fucking complain about with all four limbs working, the ability to go to my work. And it's just something that needs to be said. Also, there are a lot of people who are casual fans of the show or maybe casual attendees at at our shows or the fest. And I can just tell you that, you know, two years ago during the COVID, we lost Steve who was at everything and a big, you know, young kid, you know, moving, being around in the Santa Claus outfit. He took his life. I mean, this just fucks my mom, you know, like had things going for him, had people who loved him, had a great girl and just something in him just didn't work. And he took his own life. You know, um, sometimes very short, drastic things happen. An emotional explosion of fuck this happens. And these people walk away from all of this. And I'm just asking you that. If you ever came to a show or you ever listened to this show, you can reach out. It's hard. I've I've dealt with suicide. I've had to go to therapy. I've had two therapists dump me this year because I was working too much to come into office. And they felt like their practice didn't really translate well on the telephone and it's just one of the things that you have to do you know but there's people that you may not even feel like they give a fuck that they see at these shows they see it and they see you trying they're there for you and remember that it's a it's a it's a cold time if you feel alone or if the family life is difficult or the money isn't there or the job doesn't seem like it's going to be there but it's perspective based and it's how you play your cards that are going to be the outcome. And the world isn't destined to get you. It's your mentality. And it took me years to learn that. Not two years, not five, but like fucking 15, almost 20 years to get to that point where turning what seemingly looked like bad into promise or at least pushing myself saying, it ain't going to be today. It might not be tomorrow, but the sun's going to fucking come out again and things are going to get better. And I and I've lived that way a lot, you know. Some of my, some of my best hardcore shows, done people happy, show fantastic, sold out, had some dark shit behind it, and you just don't see that from public figures and people that do shit, because you think that they're squared away and everything's fucking gravy. There's nothing gravy for any fucking person. There's always something, whether it's family, whether it's the past. There's always going to be things, and it's what draws people like us to this kind of music and it makes it important to understand that you being a part of this people will relate to your own struggles can help you can at least give you some you know words of support like this but just don't give up the fight you know we got the king of hardcore himself scott vogel stranded in buffalo new york I don't even know if he's got power. I've seen some reports of my friends in Buffalo who have like two foot of snow, no heat, but they've got electric and they're making the best of it. This weather was fucking absolutely insane. I had flown out to Portland, Oregon to drive Jess back to Philadelphia. And between, you know, flights and bullshit and this fucking storm chasing us through 13 states it was a it was like a cannonball run but all things considered dinner was fantastic this morning breakfast hanging christmas there's no tree in this house but there's love there's promise for a future and there is a happiness in what i have accumulated what i have what i have to look forward to you know and i feel like sometimes People need to understand that. I've never been a big commercial guy. I was never the guy who, like, if I don't get these sneakers, Santa's a bitch. It's never been like that for me. In fact, I think just being at a table with all my friends eating food and laughing, making fun of the fact that the service was ridiculously bad and the fact that Rob was eating cold pasta and trying to make the most of the chicken parm and just... The shenanigans of even when things aren't great, instead of being like, this fucking sucks, we should have went somewhere else. No one said that. Everyone was laughing. Everybody was telling jokes. 
everybody had a great experience and that's what you need to be to get through this kind of shit nothing's perfect and that's my that's the message of today is nothing's perfect and the internet will only show you the good things but the real shit is the people that you surround yourself with the stuff that you face and how you deal with it and the position that you place yourself to deal with the problems of your life or just if you're in a situation where you don't even know where to go next you know there's always going to be people out there who have a perspective or have experience and you can lean on you can ask on it you know whether it's I always talk about with show booking or tour booking or how to do stuff with bands, but just in real life. You know, I've got friends, as you, if you listen to episode 100 with Freight Train, you know, the guys in that band are big brothers to me, you know, and on top of it is, you know, they got their shit together. And I, I, I always look at them and go, fuck, I got to ask them how they do this. And then I realize, like, I'm not even, I to ask other people, yeah, what point am I able to do this? And then they're like, I realize, fuck, I got to hustle just to get into the business get into a position to then ask them, hey, I got this going on. How do I make this work? And that's the beautiful thing about the hardcore scene is the amount of people that you can rely on, you know, the amount of people that you can glean information from, the amount of people that you specifically have to draw inspiration and just anything from. It's all here. The positive note due to the amazing gift is that I foresee... The laptop I'm on just being for emails and bullshit. And that machine solely being dedicated to the podcast. And we'll definitely speed up the process of some of the video stuff I've been working on. And i um, hoping to open up some things in the next couple of weeks. Probably no guarantee, but you know, right around FYA or soon after. There will be the annual FYA episode, which will we, we, we me, me and Bob, will be recording and um, looking into the things that I can now get, not having to put the big expenditure of a laptop into something that gives me the opportunity to do more interviews direct. It was a lot of fun to do that with Diego and Slave, and I realize it's just a different component I need couple more microphones and some stands and I'm ready to rock and push this thing a little bit further in a different direction with more opportunities now to get these things out on time and might even start making up for old time by doing maybe like an interview episode and then like a show review, CD review, look how fucking date I am, fucking boomer, like you know, talk about new tracks and shit on one day, and then the Friday is just for the interviews. Let's let's not get ahead of ourselves, but that was a thought. Try to get something later out on a Monday, and then the long boy, the two, three-hour interview, and on the weekend, or on the Fridays, like we've been doing it. It's a goal. you got to set goals, especially in the new year, and these are goals for myself. Also looking to go back to episode one. Got the, some of the audio working on, but again, with the, this computer's capabilities are limited. So potentially with the new one, I'll be have the chance to go back in, clean up some audio, make some uh, added changes, and start adding the episodes in order from 1 to 100 with minimal background on YouTube and just trying to expand just the quality of the uh, the podcast and the quality of the episodes coming out regularly without, oh, what happened to this episode? And... Again, Bob and everybody just completely, completely changes the whole game plan for me. And it was something out of like a, like I never would have expected that. And it was just really fucking sweet. And I should be thankful, and I am, for the people around me. And I am thankful for the hardcore scene and what it has done for me. The people it has placed me around the information I'm able to glean, the experiences I've had. And, you know, at 42, it was pretty easy to think, yeah, I can just go ahead and uh, fly out and just drive 2,800 miles to get my girlfriend home. Because as a kid, 19 to 25, I had been going and traveling those same roads, same exact routes with these dumb bands that I was in. 
So maybe some square who's never traveled might have said, fuck, man, I don't know. How do you even do that? It's going to. But now nah, there's there's ways around everything. And I was taught a lot and I gleamed a lot. And I have a lot to appreciate that all comes from this thing. And this podcast allows me to say this to people who I haven't seen in years, people who I just run into, people who might not be able to make it to every show, but literally tell me when I when they see me, they listen to every single episode. It fucking boggles my mind. And then I have to take the perspective that hardcore doesn't leave people on these podcasts sometimes are the outlet for the person who has the family, has the job, has the things that they want and need. So it makes being at a show not impossible, but unnecessarily or difficult or not even really what they're looking for, you know? And if these podcasts that we do are the representation and connection to keep them involved, that's good enough because it is in the support of people that will help get bands like Fool's Game and whatever to the next goal. I'm telling you, um, just in short, if we're talking about Keystone Jam, which I think I'm sliding into, whew, man. Um, when you see a band terror, you know that for 20 years now, the bands, the big bands, the Strifes, the Sick of It Alls, the Agnostic Fronts, all these bands that were killing it, all found out that Terror is that band that all the people in hardcore were all about. And, you know, there's still bands who don't want to play after Terror in America. God forbid in Europe. They did something wild. They play their entire first record. And for a lot of bands who have 10, 15, 20 years plus, the first record is the biggest piece of the puzzle. And fans lose interest over time and that first record is the gold standard and it delineates and devalues over the discography yet obviously I, as I was there when the demo came out I was selling the CDs and f- the CD demos at soccer field before we would go to Goth Nights in Philadelphia it, it's it is a great record and it stands out if you were lucky enough to write a record like that record low is a low then you wrote a great hardcore record but the power and the insanity that is terror, they play this lowest of the low, and then they drop into more current songs, and the more current songs get a fucking a reaction that doubles, and that just, just shows you that they are one of the rarest things I've ever seen, which is a hardcore band who had such a stellar career over 20 years, whose first record is unfuckwithable, and yet people today are still excited about later records and their newest record. I don't know if I can name someone who would be like, nah, I'm trying to hear the new Madball shit live. I don't want to see them say set it off. You know? And it's, it's fucking true. There's not a lot of bands that do that. Now, the funny thing is now, the next one I'm going to talk about is Less Life Agony. I have seen Life Agony for 30 years now, as of 2023. And the days when River Runs Red was fresh and new, those shows were out fucking standing. And then when the newer material came, the vibe from the band changed. As a fan, I was less interested. Respectfully, I still saw them, but less interested. And in fact, when Whitfield Crane had joined and brought back some of the older vibes and the intensity on them older records... I was really enthused because I'm like, all right, this is the era of life agony that I really enjoyed. And they broke up, and then the reunion happened, and I saw them not wiggle through the earlier material, but not give it the same power as if they were not trying to make River Runs Red the big deal. Yet this Bob with this FYA has has them headlining a night and we were lucky to get them to come and be a part of how they jam before we knew terror was going to be able to definitely play and they announced they were going to do river runs red 30 years of and they put their whole ass back into them songs and it was fucking unreal like unreal unreal and so 
I tell you, Cohen FYA, if you hadn't, you're fucking up if you don't, because that was a walk down memory lane to when that band was the best that there ever was. And I was fucking mind blown. AF, another crazy moment. They go ahead, they play this thing, and they had this insane reaction from these young kids. Michael, who is the son of Mike Sleeve of uh, with um, Freight Train, he was selling merch for Shadow Realm all night, him and Wyatt. And he's like, I gotta leave and go watch Agnostic Front. And that kid was in the pit, wiling the fuck out for Agnostic Front. And I just thought, how cool it must be to have a kid who's in high school age, who's excited about bands like The Exploited, Agnostic Front. This kid's starting to play music. He's at all the punk shows, a bunch of our hardcore shows. And those young kids gave AF this fucking reaction to an to a newer song that was fucking phenomenal. Um... I'll speak on Strife, and I'll say that Strife specifically is that sleeping band. Their discography is pretty fucking solid, and live, it just comes off, and it's fucking fierce. And I'm telling you, don't sleep on Strife. Fantastic band. Of all the victory bands, they had the least ego I've ever run into. Maybe them and Ringworm are a quick tie. But it's just so easy to deal with them as a band on the promoter side of things. But just their attitude, their ability to go out, tr- fly out to the east, play a show in Long Island. Let's look crazy with our boys from Overthrow. Let's get me one to bring that Overthrow down here. Got to get with Chris from Overthrow and bring his ass down. But Strife was absolutely fucking fantastic. And um, fucking great that they flew out just for the two shows. I don't need to tell you about Wisdom and Chains in Pennsylvania. If you don't fucking know, you don't fucking know. Again, wisdom, the best, the best kept, not secret, but the best kept in the finest condition band in Pennsylvania hardcore history. Seeing Bulldoze with Puda was fucking fantastic. Seeing them honor his memory and push forward is really fucking cool. And you're going to see another set like that at FYA. Make sure to step up, make sure to be in the pit. Um, I could go through all the Keystone Jam things, but realistically, it, you're missing out if you don't check out all the bands that played that night. From End It to Carried by Six and Missing Link and Hold My Own. Yo, DBD played after End It and it was still fucking phenomenal. Uh, would say that Kings Never Die fucking held their own for being older dudes, newer band. And I would like to say that the one, two, three mix of Days Lost, Street Struck, Into Fool's Game was a perfect way to start this whole thing. We're going to do more holiday jams. We have a show Saturday, January 14th. It is Paul Bear's 55th birthday. Sheer terror in the fucking building with the boys from England, the chisel. And I mean, that's that alone would be something that would make people travel. But this is a fucking stack bill. Wisdom is going to be doing an all blood for blood set. And the reason why they're doing it, I said it before. You know, they've done the Ramones, they've done Misfits. Wisdom just played a month ago by the time that the show happened, so they didn't want to do just Wisdom stuff, so they're doing a Blood for Blood split. Violent Way from Buffalo. Hopefully the snow ends and they get her down there. And it's back. Bury Dreams is playing. The Fight. Um, and Please Die, January 14th. Make sure you're at that show, because that shit is going to be absolutely fucking ignorant. Um, real quick, because... It's Christmas. I don't want to have you guys just just listening to me. Like, what the fuck is he still talking about? Because we played the Trials of Life track that I fucking think is the hardest. At the Polish Club, July, uh, January 21st, is the Fool's Game record release with Hangman, Barry Dreams, Fire in the Blood from Western PA, Off the Tracks, Bob Wilson, Eric Wolk, Life of Pain, Killing Me. You gotta go. This shit's gonna be fucking outrageous. Um, okay, like I said, we're gonna we're we're doing the FYA podcast, so we'll talk more. I just wanted to on Christmas send some love, tell you some positive shit that's gonna happen for the podcast, and then remind you that you should not bury yourself in the things you don't have. Look to the people around you. Look to the things that you do. Look to the things that you love, and push yourself forward. 
and hopefully we will see you in 2023 at FYA. And if not, reach out. Don't do something stupid because of emotions that are running high. There's always a chance to change things. TIHC podcast for everything. Fool's Game is Fool's Game HC on Instagram. They've got a band camp and all this stuff. And um, just support the real bands as you have all year. Thank you for supporting This Is Hardcore Podcast. And we will have some awesome shit coming soon. Thank you to those once again who have gifted me a new laptop and a kind of excitement to be able to do this podcast at a better level than I've ever had before. Love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.